Next, we're going to go over the King, um, King Airway, another Superglottic Airway device. These are color coded as well, like the eye gels, and you're going to pick your color based on the patient's height. So we typically use a number four, which is the red King Airway, and that is for our five to six foot person. Um, and there are a larger size for six foot and above, and there's a smaller size for below six feet, and then we also have some pediatric sizes. It'll tell you on the King um, Airway how many mLs to insert into the um, inflation balloon. So we do want to test that prior to inserting this to make sure that it works correctly. So I'm going to drop 60 mLs of air in my syringe. This is a twist on syringe, so I just pressed and twist slightly. And I want to check my balloon to make sure there's no holes or leak in the balloon. The way this King works is it's a blind insertion and it's actually made to go into the esophagus. Once it's seated in the right place, this balloon will inflate to close off the esophagus and this port will then force air down the trachea. This balloon here closes off the oral pharynx so we don't get any air leaking around it. Some of these also do have a port for oral gastric suctioning. Um, this one, however, does not. So we start with our patient. Our patient is unresponsive. They're not breathing, but they do have a pulse. We want to start with our um, BVM ventilation at 15 liters per minute, 100% oxygen. Remember to make sure you have your good EC clamp. I'm going to bag at a rate of one breath every five to six seconds. Make sure you're counting out loud so you're not over bagging your patient. We can always insert our oral airway to make this um, a better airway for our patient. That helps maintain the airway and keep it open. So I'm going to look at my equipment. I'll pass off my BVM to my partner. We want to pull out, make sure we have the right King Vision or King Airway. Make sure our balloon is patent and there's no leaks. Make sure our syringe can attach and we do want to lube the distal tip of this device so it goes in easier. When I'm ready, after my partner's pre-oxygenated my patient, meaning they've been ventilating with 100% oxygen, we can go ahead and take out the oral airway. And this will also be a blind insertion. We want to insert the King airway all the way down to the lip line. It'll naturally seat in place. We're going to fill our balloon. Make sure once you fill the balloon, you detach the syringe, otherwise the air will leak back into the syringe. I can now attach my BVM. And at first, sometimes you may not get ventilation if you're down too far. You may have to pull up a little bit on the King Airway to get good ventilation. But as you look at my lungs down here, you can see that I'm getting really good back compliance and I definitely have um, it seated in the right place. From here, we do want to listen to lung sounds. Make sure we have lung sounds over each side and no sounds over the epigastrium because that could mean that we're getting air in the stomach. You do want to um, secure this because it can come out. So I will show you how to use the securement device. This is a commercial securement device. It's pretty common. The way I do this is I always put the letters at top so you can see, you can read it if you're looking at the patient. This is kind of like a bite block. It's going to go in between the teeth. So make sure when you are putting this on, you are getting it all the way down where it's supposed to be. From here, we just tighten the clamp on the one side. Make sure you have access to your balloon. The strap is going to go around the patient's head and loop through the other side and then Velcro. Now as you're bumping down the road, you don't have to worry about your tube coming out. You do want to hold your tube with your hand until you get it secured, but after that you can go ahead and let go.